This first part of the lecture on reason, emotion, binary and the law serves as a general introduction to the topic. The lecture engages with the reason, emotion, binary in the Western tradition and problematizes such a dualistic conception. The relationship between the law, reason and emotions is then briefly explored. Reason and emotion are often perceived as opposites. It is easy to recall this juxtaposition in everyday discourse. Reason, rationality and the brain are often perceived as cold and objective, while emotions and the heart are perceived as impulsive and subjective. Cognitive science have long refuted such a dualism as overly simplistic. Emotions and reasoning are deeply intertwined rather than two separate eventualities. Nevertheless, the dualistic conception of reason and emotion remains. Employing this epistemic binary as a descriptive tool is often perceived as neutral. But as this lecture illustrates, description and prescription too are not easy to dis disentangle. Conceptual dualism creates rather than just describes the world. Thus, theoretical models also suffice the subject positions of those inhibiting the world. The dualistic of binary conception of reason and emotion profoundly shaped cultures and has had serious consequences for the legal status and legal subjectivity of marginalized groups of the population, such as women, the poor, people of color, colonial subjects, and so on. Binary definitions are plentiful. Pairs like reason, emotion, mind, body, culture, nature, male, female, white, black, and many others are often presented as neutral descriptions of objective reality. But critical theory has long been suspicious on binary de definitions. For example, deconstruction, a strategy most famously elaborated by the French post-constructualist philosopher Jacques Derrida, points out that binaries are not neutral or purely descriptive. Rather, they are based on political prejudice and entail a hierarchy of a privileged and devaluated element. Fleshing out the hierarchical relationships instilled in the pairs, like reason and emotion, men and women, white and black, and some such, allows for a powerful political critique. Deconstruction does not aim to reverse, neutralize, or destroy the binaries it addresses. To the contrary, it seeks to eliminate these binaries and expose their presumptions. Deconstruction aims to address whatever was silenced in the creation of a binary definition and demonstrate that binaries are never fully closed. That is, that the two opposites composing a binary cannot be fully disentangled. Rather, they are hopelessly intermixed. Understanding the hierarchical nature of binary definitions is helpful to explain the preference for reason and everything identified with reason, for example, maleness, in the legal domain. It also helps explain why emotions and everything identified with emotions, for example, femaleness, was traditionally perceived as the enemy of objective reasoning and rational legal judgment. Since emotions are present in animals and infants, they were conceptually separated from reason and long perceived as intuitive involuntary forces in Western thought. Nevertheless, emotions develop and mature with age, can be trained, and are integral to moral reasoning, aesthetic reasoning, and reasoning in general. It is important to stress that we still do not fully understand how emotions, reasoning, mind, and brain actually work. Various cognitive processes, including emotions' exact nature and role, remain open to diverse interpretations. Emotions have long incited the interest of biology, psychology, sociology, philosophy, cognitive and neurosciences, yet their definition remains open-ended. Many different theories of emotion are in circulation and this lecture cannot provide a comprehensive overview. 
To give you an idea of diversity in the scientific theories about emotions, let's consider only a few examples. 19th century evolutionary biologist Charles Darwin studied emotions as evolutionary responses in animals, including human animals. Darwin's theory heavily influenced the theory of basic human emotion. This theory proposes that six basic human emotions are universal across cultures and are easily identifiable on a human face. Scientists like Paul Ekman wildly researched this theory in the second half of the 20th century. The universal emotions theory is also at the basis of the artificial intelligence tool that use machine vision to recognize emotions on human faces. In the AI-generated images you see on the screen, you will notice that the only emotion portrayed on a male face is anger, traditionally the only emotion men were allowed to express. You will also notice that all faces are white. This AI bias, a reflection of societal biases in machines constructed and trained by humans. Universal emotion theory, however, is far from universally accepted in the scientific community. The 19th century James Lang theory of emotions is another influential theory rooted in Darwin's ideas. This theory proposes that emotions are physiological responses to external stimuli. Cognitive theories of emotions, like Schachter Singer theory, on the other hand, propose that emotions are cognitive appraisals of physiological responses. Neurological theories of emotion, like the theory of Antonio de Masio, focus on how the brain creates emotions and related physiological responses. Neurological theories suggest that emotions are integral to reasoning, as de Masio's research showed, that the patients who suffered a brain injury that hindered their ability to emote experienced extreme difficulty in reasoning and decision making. Emotions may also be understood as cultural or social phenomena. The cultural or social constructivism theory of emotions proposes that emotions are not universal, but socially constructed. According to these types of theories, interpretation, expression, management, and appraisal of emotions depend on societies and individual subject positions. There is no consensus about what emotions are or how they work. Current trends, nevertheless, reject the strict separation of emotions and logical reasoning and decision making. Contemporary scientific theories of emotions mostly reject the idea that emotions come over us and un as unruly elements. Emotions can be trained and managed and are integral to a human being's functioning in society. The binary conception of reason and emotions nevertheless persists in folk psychology. As we will see in part two, it has a long history and many sociocultural implications. Let us now consider the implications of the reason-emotion binary for the Western legal orders. In the Western tradition, the law is often portrayed as the domain of reason and is perceived as ideally free of emotions. Reason is perceived as central to legal theory and practice, as the guarantee of objectivity, neutrality, and the rule of law. Nevertheless, the law is a very emotional business. Legislative, administrative, and judicial procedures encompass and provoke intense feelings in spectators and those directly involved. Regardless, the ideal image of a dispassionate judge presiding over the emotional drama rationally applying legal norms to the factual mess remains persistent. In recent decades, a diverse body of law and emotions scholarship seeks to challenge this view and introduce nuance to the binary representation of reason and emotion. Nevertheless, 
emotions are still viewed with suspicion as potential contaminants threatening impartiality and objective, the objectivity of judgment. The idea that emotions are irrational forces that come over a person and must hence be controlled and tamed by reason seems to persist and conserve the hierarchical structure of the reason-emotion divide. Despite academic interest in law and emotion, the legal domain in general still approaches emotions based on the beliefs of folk psychology. Even if these often conflict with contemporary scientific narratives that consider the opposition or perception of reason and emotions as outdated. The historical exclusion of subordinate groups from the political community is reflected in the very concept of a human being, sometimes referred to as man, in law, and philosophy. Denominate a man as a universal signifier for a member of, of the human race is again not neutral. It rather reflects the humankind, or better, mankind, used to be a much more narrow concept than it is today. Reason emotion binary plays a crucial role here, as reason is often invoked as the defining features of humanity. Accordingly, some men, at least those endowed with high social status, material prosperity and white skin, have long felt warm and comfortable in the law's empire that grants them rights and protects their interests. They are the original human being invoked by the article number one of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, quote, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. End quote. Subordinate groups, on the other hand, were, as still are, commonly presented as the other emotional, animalistic, closer to nature, lesser in reason and consequently denied education, opportunities and full membership in the political community. The other, excluded from the brotherhood of reasonable men, often experienced the law as Kafka's trial. The article number two of the declaration neatly expresses some of the markers of oppression that have severe consequences for perceived capacity to reason and thus for perceived humanity, daily lives and interactions with the law on the part of the other. Quote, everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedom set forth in this declaration without distinction of any kind, such as race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth, or other status." End quote. Western culture historically favors reason to emotion, men to women, white people to people of color, rich to poor, and so on. The hierarchical nature of binary definitions is thus not just a theoretical concept, but a lived reality. Historically, men, that is, white, heterosexual men, were identified with reason and objectivity. Everyone else was identified with the opposite of the favoured concepts. Women, people of colour, the poor, the colonised, homosexuals and other were identified with emotions. Since emotions and reason were perceived as mutually exclusive, those deemed emotional were also deemed less reasonable or completely unreasonable and hence hardly human. Unsurprisingly, then, people of colour, women, the poor and the colonised gained the right to vote much later than rich white men. Access to higher legal education and pu public office was practically impossible for women before the 20th century, while the role of the judge remained reserved for men ever longer. 
Arguments against allowing women to serve on the bench stress that women are too emotional, irrational, disorderly, and in need of protection from the harsh realities of the courtroom. The struggle of indigenous populations of the colonized territories and various minorities across the Western world is also far from complete, as the office of state judge long remained reserved for white men of a specific background. As we have seen, binary definitions are not merely describing, but creating the world, including the world of the law.